check out some cool vendors and some awesome animals. Hey guys! Okay, so the first table I want to show you is Animal House Pets and Supplies. They're a local pet store in Wisconsin. What they specialize in is having a variety of things, products, lots of exotic animals and reptiles. So I'm just going to show you their table. I think it's definitely worth showing. So they always have a lot of uncommon lizard and gecko species. As well as monitors, tables. <laughs> Dan, the owner of Animal House, always breeds really high end leeches. He's, <laughs> oh, he's upset. angry. Yeah. <laughs> That's so cute. So, along with the animals, Animal House also has a lot of awesome supplies, basically, everything you need to take care of your animals. They also have a lot of plants. Some really cool carnivorous ones, pitcher plants and things. A lot of neat desert plants and succulents. And I call these butt plants because they look like butts, but they're called stone plants. They have a lot of really awesome live planted terrariums that they can build for you or you can buy pre-built. And they've sold some so there's not as many here, but a lot of different tank sizes and things. They usually sell out pretty quickly at the Tinley Show. But they do usually bring a lot of really awesome stuff to each Tinley Expo, so definitely worth checking them out. Okay, so the second booth I would like to show you is called AJD Reptiles. This is AJ. So he focuses primarily on New Caledonian species. He has a lot of really high-end crested geckos, and I'm just going to take a look at some of them, and I'll link his business in the description and uh, put it on screen so you can go check out what he has. This is all um, for my bloodbath line. Like this. Blood bath. I can't believe that's real, honestly. <laughs> and it's not a lily white. No. I'll show you another animal that's not a lily white. Though. So this is, I repeat, not a lily white. It is not a lily white. <laughs> so I really like this kind of stuff, like this kind of orange yeah. cream. But with the dark base. Yeah. Yeah. You also have a lot of lily whites, right? I have some. Yeah. Oh, oh. <laughs> so he has a lot of lily whites too. Did you start out with low end geckos and work your way up? Well, I started when there was no morph. So. Oh, you did. Everything was 15 years ago. There was partial pinstripes. There was animals that had like a couple Dalmatian spots, and there was flames. Flames. And that's all that existed. When did you get your first lily white? I got it from Lily Exotics, like two months after. You did? Yeah. So you were one of the people on the waiting list. Yes. Your lily whites, do they all come from the same lines or do you have They all come direct them? from lily exotics but then everything is bred to my bloodline. So stuff like the bloodbath line, some of my like yellow pin lines, stuff like this. I swear I've seen him before. Have you posted him on social media a lot? Maybe. Maybe once or twice. One, a lot of my like yellow pin line stuff ends up kind of looking like this. Oh wow. This guy's really cool. Uh, so what's your favorite crested gecko morph to breed? I would say yellow pinstripes. Yellow pinstripes? Honestly. Yeah. The thing about pinstripes for me is like I love the visual nature of them yeah. compared to a Harley. this really pretty red one here and what I like about Pangea is all of theirs seem to have really nice color like even if it's one of the like lower end geckos they all have really nice color all really pretty it's a little male 
red Dalmatian. I like Dalmatians. Dalmatians are nice. If I had to pick one, I would get this one. Oh. Tricolor all the way, right, Owen? Yeah, definitely. Tricolor. Love tricolors. It's really nice to see the white coming up on the sides of the cream. Oh my gosh, look at all these. So they have a lot of crested geckos and supplies and things on their website at PangeaReptile.com. So if you see something you like on the table, you can probably find something similar on their website. In my opinion, they are priced to their values. Oh, that one's awesome. More Dalmatians. Ooh, this one's like gray almost. That's another. Is this the tricolor you left it before? Yeah, that's the tricolor. See, it stands out. Yeah. I just keep wanting to pick it back up. Oh, look at this little guy. <laughs> He's a little brindle. She. My bad. I'm sorry. You're a girl. I like the ones with the white that goes up the crest. Yeah. Look at this one's head. I love it when they have nice structure like that. So moral of the story is, they have a lot of nice crested geckos. They don't just have crested geckos though. Uh, they have a lot of really nice gargoyles and lychees and a lot of other new Caledonian species. So let me show you some of those. And they also have tiny little morning geckos. So they have a lot of Eurydactylodes, uh, which are like the Villardi and the Agricolae chameleon geckos. Those is their common name, and I have a male and female pair of these, so I've been excited to start trying to breed them. Yeah, the captive bred tokays are really awesome, because most of the tokays you're going to see at expos are wild caught. Usually they don't do very good, so it's really cool to see that they have captive bred of these guys. Whoa, this thing just caught my eye and shocked me a little bit. This is beautiful. So yeah, they have a lot of gargoyles. Look at all these. Oh yeah, I'll be around, for sure. Oh, and some Saracenorums. These are another New Caledonian species. <laughs> They're uh, basically the same care as a crested gecko. And of course, we have little lychees. This one's really pretty. Basically every time I look at their table, I almost always leave with something. Um, I kept it together this time, and I didn't get one. <laughs> We'll see, because at the end of the day. But. <laughs> I probably will, I probably will. I wanted to show you some of their supplies too because they have basically everything you need to care for your crested geckos. You can find all this on the website too, but if you're coming to the next Tim Lee, I'm pretty sure they'll be here. Let me just show you a couple of their supplies real quick too. So obviously, everyone needs the Pangea food for their crested geckos, their lychees, and basically all the new Caledonian species. Mine like the apricot a lot. So obviously, you need a place to put your geckos food and I like using the gecko feeding ledge and um, I've had one of these in Astrid's cage my lychee for a long time and it's held up you usually put these plastic cups in there but this is like super exciting I'm so excited to be saying this they have made biodegradable cups to use in your gecko's feeding dishes this is just so awesome I believe they're the first reptile people to do this so I'm really excited I'm definitely gonna get some of these to take home. And I try not to use plastic so this helps already. I think a lot of people that love animals in the environment try to avoid plastic and reduce their carbon footprint so this is yeah really awesome and I think these will be available on their website and on Amazon as well. Okay so that was the Pangea table. I think that's the third table I filmed. I just have one more to film uh, to show you guys and then we're just going to look at more animals. Go to the auction and then there will be the day two. Technically day three because I didn't film yesterday though so it's day two for you guys of the Tinley Reptile Expo. Okay so this is the fourth table I wanted to show you guys and it is Midwest Reptiles by Brady and then we have Sand Boas by Scott Miller. They're kind of like a table together and they both have sand boas and blue tongue skinks and a lot of really healthy snakes so yeah let's take a look at some of them. Oh my goodness. So what's this one? This is a Paradox Snow Stripe. Paradox Snow Stripe. And what, what genetics go into these? Um, it's anorthristic, uh, the Paradox Albino, and the Stripe. How long have you been working with these? Uh, I've been breeding Sambos for over t oh, almost 25 years now. 25 years? Yeah. Wow. Here's a normal female, but this one also carries the genetics for uh, Hypo, Paradox Albino, and Annery. So you carry the higher end ones as well as the pet quality low yes. grade ones? Yeah. I ship through FedEx and yeah, I always put pictures of litters and animals on the, on the Facebook page. This is a Paradox Snow. 
so cute. I love how they try to burrow in your hand. Yeah, they're pretty pretty shy, but they do make really good pets because they're easy to handle, and especially for kids, they're not intimidating. Yeah. And they don't get very big. And this is an adult anorthristic male, or anery for short. This is how big a male will get. This is your average adult size male. Okay, this is fully grown, basically. Yeah. I also breed Peruvian longtail boas. Peruvian longtail boas? Yeah, uh, longicata they're called. These will get a little bit bigger. Males get about four and a half to five feet. Females can get up to five or six feet, but they're not as heavy bodied as like Colombian boas are. The coolest thing about longicata boas is when they're born, they're very plain looking like this. Yeah. Um, like these one, this pair in particular are uh, the yellow line, and as they as they grow over the next two or three years, they'll get like a, a silvery or a black color through the saddles, and then through the lighter parts, that will all turn like a gold or a bright pale yellow. Um, so they'll look nothing like this by the time they reach adult size. This is a hypo that's for anery, um, and the hypo trait is something I've been working with for a uh, number of years now. Um, and it, wow. does, it does some neat things to change the, the color tones. So right. the other side of the table is Midwest Reptiles, and he's going to show us some of his really pretty blue tongue skinks. And so this is a northern blue tongue, correct? Yep, this is a northern blue tongue from Australia. And how many of these do you produce a year? Um, last year I produced about uh, 45. Yes. This year I expect to have a few more, some some uh, more higher end colors and some reds. Now this right. one actually here is just a, a, a classic blue tongue. Uh, it does come from a high orange line, so it'll probably continue to color up a little bit mm -hmm. as it ages. If you guys are looking for some blue tongue skinks, his look really healthy and really nice quality, so definitely check him out on Facebook. And then these are Indonesian ones. So you have Indonesian, Northern, and do you have any other species of I blue do, tongue? I do work with uh, the Eastern Blue Tongue Skinks as well. And what do you have available right now? Right now just the Northerns and a couple of uh, the Indonesians here. Okay. Uh, the Northern season, they were just finished up with their breeding and uh, we'll begin uh, having babies probably June, July, and August. This is uh, Stripe Paradox Albino made from combining uh, the Paradox Albino gene with uh, Rufescens sand boas. So that was Midwest Reptiles. I really like his blue tongue skinks. They were all very healthy looking and plump. So.